screen. So if uh, the person who's peer reviewing gives me the OK, this is the final things that this is what you're going to have as your final, what you see now. This. All right. So uh, um, so uh, the total, I aligned it to 100. So it's 100%. 20 marks is for concept questions and walkthroughs. Walkthroughs are the same thing. Small walkthroughs, small answers. You don't have a big thing to go through. OK? Concept questions the same. Either the concept questions are going to be multiple choice, and I'm going to ask you to write something, one of these two. OK? So for concept question, I may ask you, like, uh, I don't know, um, what is the worst case scenario that might happen in multiple inheritance? And you've got to explain to me what can go wrong in multiple inheritance. Things like that. Or uh, 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 I don't know, what is a smart pointer? What is the use for it? Iman's going to answer that because he had like 55 questions when I was teaching it. So things like that. Or it could be multiple choice. Again, I have to this. If it's multiple choice, you're going to have more. If it's not multiple choice, you're going to have only, uh, I'll tell you. So what the walkthroughs are walkthroughs, you have it. So it's going to be online in person. Each programming question has, uh, that's, you don't need that. There's no problem with that. Uh, let me just go through stuff. So the first question, you're going to create a, a, a template for a functor. So you're going to create a functor template. In that functor template, you're going to do some uh, uh, fiddling with a container. And you're going to return that container using a smart pointer. And that's what you're doing. OK, so that's first question. Any questions about that? So, yes. Functor is a class, right? Template for a class, right? OK, okay done. OK. Yeah, functor, has, functor is a class that has just one operator overload in it that makes it a functor. OK? So you're going to create the class. The class needs some, some, some type of creation. You're going to see that. And the functor of the class, that is the focus of the class, is going to do something to a container uh, and uh, return the container using a smart pointer. So your container is supposed to be dynamic. You have to dynamically create your container, whatever your container is. I don't know. List of containers, you see what they are. List, I don't know, DQ, vector, whatever it's going to be. And file involved, binary file involved. So you've got to open file, read from a data file, and do stuff like that. That's first one. 40 marks. There are only two questions. So <laughs> question number two has two parts. Part one is 10 marks. And you are going to implement uh, a function. Uh, and inside that function, you're going to do some calculation either using, uh, using C++ 11 and later, C++ 14 and later. So you cannot write a for loop and calculate stuff for me. If it's a for loop, it has to be a range-based for loop. Or you, you should use an algorithm. You cannot use it to OP244 style. So I'm going to ask you to do some thing to me, for me, on a container. And you have to do it either using STL or using uh, new C++ stuff. All functions are the new style. You are not writing any function old style. So all functions are going to be auto, function, arrow, return type. All functions, anything you create. OK? So you will see in a, in a, in a description, like, like well, I, I'm, saying, uh, I'm saying this is part one, and I'm going to part one, and I'm going to put an uh, implementation. Uh, I'm going to ask you what you are going to implement. This is your task. This is your requirement. Uh, you, what are your constraints are? So um, I'm going to tell you what the constraints are, what error handling you're going to do. I'll give you a usage example. OK? So you create this function. And then I'm going to ask you to create another function. And that's, so this one was 10 marks. The other one is 26 marks. So you're creating another function that's doing another calculation, but that's parallel processing. 
So you're going to use the first function that you have. So if you didn't implement that function, no worries. Just use it as if it's implemented. If you couldn't do it, you don't need to answer it. You, you know what the prototype is. Hello, hello. That's the least that you need to know. Uh, I'm not going to give you what the prototype of the function, but at least you need to, if, if I'm asking you to write a function, if you are an OP244 student, you know what the prototype is. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to, to know about that. Then you use that function and you ran, run that function in parallel and do something. No threats, it's going to be all async. Okay? Yeah, because threats are not covered. We don't have threats in, in OP345. Yeah, we don't have threats. Right? Threats were all extra. I, didn't, I talked about mutexes and things like that. It, it's just a small explanation over there. It doesn't tell you what it is. So we are only doing async and future. So async and future is your friend. That's what you're doing. Okay? So don't worry about joining stuff. <laughs> yes, but I might ask you. What happens if you don't join? Or things like, some, some things like that. So in concept questions, I'm going to ask you. But I'm not going to ask you any, to write any threats. Yes? Okay, I don't remember. I don't remember. Instead of async, you If you want to, I, 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 in the question, I'm telling do it using async. OK? That's what I'm asking. If you prefer doing it with threat and future, sure, do it. It's your choice. No, no. If, if but, be careful. Because if you do it like that, you better know what you're doing. Because if you do something wrong, then you can't tell me, oh, I wanted to make it a better thing, so give me some mark because I did threat. No. If, if you know, if you're using threats, you, things are easier for heaven's sake. Like, it's much easier than threat. But if you want to do it with threats, be my guest. I don't, I'm not saying go over there with threat. But I'm not going to reduce mark if you use it. If you have the knowledge and use threats, sure, no problem. And that's that. Now, in all here, I'm going to ask you to use smart pointers, moving stuff, things like that. They're all asked and 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 templates and things like that. And that's that. That's all the programming that you're doing. OK? I had another programming thing that I'm going to mention to you. If that comes in, then we're going to have a third question. If it doesn't come in, if, if it's too long, then uh, these are the only two. Now, the third one that you're going to do if you're going to do it, and I have to. Mm, Bring this over here. If you are going to do this, It is going to be as follows. Oh, let me just complete it as I was talking about it. So then you're going to have uh, uh, questions that each one is two marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven questions that each one is two marks. If I correct, if I'm correct, eleven, whatever. So it adds up to a hundred, and these are all walkthroughs and concept questions. Okay. Um, and that's going to be your test. If the third question kicks in, um, the third question is going to be uh, on the following. So I give you a base exception. I'll tell you this is the exception. You inherit exceptions from it. Then you create a class that uh, does some user input, and uh, you validate that input using functors and lambda expressions or whatever you have. And uh, using exception handling, you are going to uh, write a small program that demonstrates how, to, uh, how that thing is being used in try and catch. So if the third one 
I, I can bring it in if the person who reviews it says this is too small. Uh, then I'm going to bring that one into. And if I bring that one, then this, the mark of the three uh, programmings will spread into these two. So the 80 marks that we have over there, probably that's going to be, become 60 marks and 20 marks comes to this one. And that's that. That's your test. Okay? Uh, but when I send you that agreement test that you're going to do as you did for your midterm, in there, for definite, it says exactly what the uh, type of the questions are. So you're ready for it. Okay? Again, for programming courses, and because it's, it's absolutely closed book, um, remember if you have STL libraries that you need to remember how they work, make sure you write their signatures. Um, um, the things that is more common that, that, you, that you need to know, write those things so you know the signatures, algorithms, write the signatures that you have. So if I ask you to do a, a sort on the data using whatever, you know how to sort it. If I ask you to, I don't know, uh, um, add 30% to all the values, you know how to do transform. Uh, if I ask you to find the sum of everything, you know how to accumulate. So things like that, it's a good idea to go through them and have the signature with you. Um, again, like. Uh, as before, your uh, reference sheets are collected. Uh, the reference sheets, then only your name should be big, font 20. Only your name. The rest, make it font 2.5. I don't care. Okay? But when I pass through, if I cannot, my eyes are weak. If I pass through, I look at your reference sheet, I cannot read your name. This one is final test. There's no joke. I'll take your reference sheet away. Okay? Remember that. Your reference sheet's name should be readable from a meter and a half. Okay? If I cannot read your name from a meter and a half on your reference sheet, I'll collect your reference sheet. You're not going to have it. And I'll be merciless on that. Don't tell me, oh, uh, let me write it now with a pen. No. You have to have it ready. No exceptions. You must be ready for it. Okay? And the test, the test is going to be 105 minutes. Uh, starting from the beginning of the class, I'll try to come early and set it up. Make sure as soon as you come, you know the drill. You run the thing. Uh, immediately, these are the things that you run. You are not allowed to use Firefox or Chrome. Only uh, Edge, because that's the only one I can filter when I go to Mythware over there. So on that one, I'm going to block F. So the only applications allowed running on your computer is an Edge and a notepad plus plus. Any other thing, it won't allow you to execute it or block it. Remember that. Okay, so as soon as the test starts, I'm going to say, so you can even open a file explorer. Remember that, okay? Um, uh, so yeah, have, so make your computers ready. Uh, probably I'm going to make it 100 minutes instead of 105 because you need five minutes to set up your computers. Um, and then we start like usual, okay? Like midterm, many of you came and said, oh, we're sorry, we, I copied and pasted quickly and things like it didn't format properly. And I say, okay, I'll mark it, mark it. So I marked it for you. Uh, this time it's final test. The marks are due literally two days after it's done. So there is no time. You won't be able to see your mark before I pass it through. Make sure you do it properly if, because if I see the format is bad and I cannot mark it, I won't. Because you're going to get zero. <coughs> For it. Then it's going to go for the uh, uh, exam viewing, and that's going to be a tough thing. And you have to appeal because I'm not going to give you the mark. You have to appeal. It has to go to the appeal. Then I'm going to show you that agreement that you put over there to the appeal that you signed that I'm going to submit it properly. And then we're going to go through it. And most likely you're going to lose the appeal. So your choice. So again, uh, um, please follow the instruction. It's not difficult. Okay. And again, at five minutes before the, the test is about to be done, I'm going to say, the test is about to be done. Copy and paste. Make sure that you don't lose any work and then continue to work. I'm going to tell you that. Okay? If after that you don't copy and paste, and you, you don't copy and paste your work into your test, and you lose it, then it's not my fault. Okay? Five minutes before the time is up, I'll let you know. So I'll try to be as fair as possible, and the tests. The questions, I literally told you what the questions are. So be ready for them. I just want to see that you can do it yourself without anybody's help. If that's the case, then mission accomplished. It means you're a pass, and you're going to go with an A-plus out of this class, hopefully. 
Okay. Question. Oh, uh, students with accommodation, if you want to do your test in a test center, you need to send the email to me now because I need to send it five days earlier and two days are uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so I need to send it earlier so they can set up the time and it's hectic now because everybody's doing final. So you have to send it to me now if you want to do your test in a test center. Okay. Um, so I'll set it up for you and I'll tell you what it is and then you're going to tell me what time you're going to be at the test center so I'm going to set it up so it's going to be open for you at that time on a test center so you need to know all these things and the reason I'm saying that is that if there's someone over here uh, that um, is not over here and a student with accommodation uh, hopefully listens to the recording and uh, will do the same yes sir Why not? You can vector is an object. You can you can go vector employee pointer is equal to new vector employee. I'm not going to give you the answer for the question, no, but but I'm going to tell you how to create a pointer. So what happens is that you have to create a vector. You have to create a pointer type to that vector. You always create a reference for it, right? Instead of, how do you create a pointer to an integer? Exactly the same thing. Take the integer out, put a vector instead. Exactly the same. But if you do it like this, then you have to delete it. To make sure you don't need to delete it, what do you use? Smart pointer. Okay. Unique pointer. So, okay. so, so you got to, or, or shared pointer, depending on what you're doing with it. So if you want to make sure that you're not going to have a leak after, Instead of creating a regular pointer, you use a smart pointer. But the syntax after that is identical with the regular pointer. So whenever you want to access it, you go star something, okay, target of something, right? If you want to get the uh, address of, you know what? Anyways, yes, sir. So you said you're, you're going to have binary. Yes. What do you mean by relocate? Jump to certain position? Of course. It's three, four, five. That's two, four, four. You need to be able to go to a record, come back to a record, do all these stuff. So you need to know all these things. It's a binary. It's binary access to a record. Yes. No. I don't know which question is gonna be when. It's okay. randomized. Okay. Is going to be a template of a class that that class happens to be a, a, a functor. So I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. I'm using class templates and thing at the same time. And no other No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In all your questions, you are doing something with SDL and containers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a given. All the questions that you have, you have containers, you have algorithms, you have all of these good stuff in there. Yes, sir. Any algorithm you want. You can use a for each algorithm if you want. You can use a, a range-based for loop if you want. You can use any kind of SDL that does, SDL algorithm that does what I ask you in there. So. Just, it's, you, have to, you have to show off your C++ 14 and 8, 17 and 20 talents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> and if it wasn't the joke, the answer is no. <laughs> Can I use a range best while loop? No, we don't have such a thing. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, so, okay. So that's that. Um, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, but uh, sorry, that resolution is so. <laughs> yeah, it's being, it's being recorded. 4K as well. <laughs> I know, in 4K. So you're going to have, you're going to hear my voice in 4K and look at this. Thing. Yeah. Anyways, and it's going to take probably three hours to upload. 
All right, so that's that. Uh, and uh, I'm just trying to see if there is anything that I missed. Okay, let me pause the recording. Okay, so when you are doing multi-threading, you're essentially uh, having a function, a void function, a function that doesn't, doesn't return anything. You pass it to the thread, right? So how does this function return to you what's happening? How do you, because your job is to have this ginormous task, you break it down into pieces, and you run them in parallel, you get the values out of these parallel things, now you have only eight of them instead of five million, right? And then you do whatever you're supposed to do with those five to get the final result, right? Now, how these fives, five things are returned, then that's what you need to think about. When you are creating, when you are creating a threat, these are everything that you have to do it manually. But when you are creating, uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, uh, an async thing, you just put it in a vector to the number of processes. And all your processes go in a vector and they all produce the result via a return statement in future. Literally and syntactually, if I could, if that's the word. So because everything is written into in future, you are not manipulating the same data. So they are all doing their stuff separately and they give you the result at the end, which means no need to interfere with each other, right? Therefore, the values that are returned are raw material of the processes that are done quick. And the funny thing is that I wrote it in thread myself, and I wrote it in async, and I timed it. It was quicker in async. And then I put it in the STL, it was like six times quicker. So no matter how you think that you're good, the person who designed C++ is better, OK? So don't think that if you are using STL, you're saying like one of those, like, like people who like to edit their code with VI on Linux, text editor, so I'm going to use VI. I'm not going to use a, uh, an IDE. You know what I mean? Why? Because I like to use my toes and nose and finger when I'm programming, because you have to hold this, hold that, kick the thing, and do like that, and then uh, a copy happens in VI, right? So Yeah. But, you don't want to go hardcore like that. I mean, like, why? Because the, like, the scientists saddle with it, literally, came up with an algorithm that does the things 10 times faster than you. Why do you want to do it manually again? It's good to understand how it's done. So, to be a good driver, you need to understand the engine of a car. But just to drive a car, you don't need to. If you're a truck driver, you are hauling goods from here to there, you need to know how to fix a brake when the thing happens. But when you're going buying grocery with your F Ford Festiva, you don't need to know about engine and stuff, right? You're just using what is given to you. You don't need to know the details. So if you know how the engine and everything works, you're a better driver. You can push your car to the limit without breaking it because you know what's happening behind the scene. That's exactly the same thing like in programming. When you know how things are happening behind the scene, then you can use the things that are the combos that are made for you much better than a person who doesn't know how. Because you know if I do this and this and that, then I'm going to have this many. So if I, if I create these many of these, then I uh, overdid the uh, splitting, like splitting of the processes and the um, overhead of creating several processes will make the program slower. And that really happens. If, if you have some array that you want to break it into four and do something on a, on a computer that has four cores, that's much faster than break it into 400 processes. 
because the overhead of managing those processes and give it to those four cores is much more expensive than going through them. So again, understanding what happens behind the scene helps, but using things created for you uh, makes the life uh, much easier. And, and the good thing is that the person who does hardcore and you that you're using the, the SDL, first of all, your program runs faster and you got to give your program 20 days earlier than the other guy, right? The other guy's sitting over there, what kind of algorithm I should use to do this search? And all you say is sort or search, ah, it comes up, right? You hand it to the client, that guy's going to hand in something, even if it's written better than you 10 days after you, um, and uh, your program probably not going to be as good as it, as him, if he's a genius. But the good thing is that later on you can give version 2.0 that is faster <laughs> and, and charge them again. Okay, so... So that's that. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not one at a time. They they do the process, the update the the update the, the the data that you have using mutex one at a time. It's like it's like y you have a washroom with keys, right? And you give the keys to, to to a person who's supposed to go to the washroom. The person is supposed to many do many things. Going to washroom it takes only a second, right? So. The process is still going to run faster. So if I have one washroom, one person who's supposed to clean the floor, the person who's going to clean the floor can go to the washroom anytime they want. But if I choose 50 people cleaning the floor, then there's going to be a lineup behind the washroom and the, the thing's going to go slow again. The best is to have only four people so they can clean up everything quickly. And at the same time, the washroom is never occupied because they're going to go to wash. So you see what I'm saying? It's a resource that is being shared. It is always a break point that you have to think, these are the number of processes that I'm using, and this is the resource that I have. If I go more than this, then they're going to be data racing. Even, it's not data racing in that, in that manner. It's, it's just wait. They're just waiting for the other one to unlock the muter so they can go and update, whatever, they're going to wait. But if you have it just enough, so there's not too much interference with, uh, with the shared resource, then you have the fastest process. That is done, every, everything's done automatically in all the SDLs behind the scene. It automatically spreads it to the perfect number of processes that are faster. So it looks at your CPU, you say, oh, you have 32 cores. But I'm not going to make it 32. I'm going to see how many is occupied now. Out of 32, I have only 12 available. Therefore, I'm going to only spread it into 12. But you don't know that. And if you do, you have to lots, run, lots, write lots of program to identify that. These are all done behind the scene. So it's faster. Yes? Same, 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 same. Atomic is the worst. Because you don't have any access to when to lock. Because on, on a mutex, you can lock and unlock it, and you have the control over it. Atomic is a washroom with only one stall in it. <laughs> Somebody goes in, locks there, there's nothing. You cannot go in anymore. But with a mutex, you can actually say, okay, I want three people to go in and come out. So you can actually decide what you want to do, depending on what the resource is and what you want. It's, it's, it's in your hands. Anything else? Any question one? Before I put anybody to sleep? Did you sleep well last night? Yeah, you look like it. I slept at 3.30 in the morning. So, <laughs> uh, we're going to have another class still. I mean, I mean today. Yeah, today's done. We have, so what I want you to do, go, please go do your studies. Oh, by the way, uh, I, when is the due date for the, for the final thing for the miles for the project? So the, uh, the, t tomorrow it's going to start penalizing or it's the end of everything? No, Sunday, Sunday is going to start. Sunday. It's due Saturday tomorrow. and then anything Sunday after that's penalized. So it's on time tomorrow.
Oh, this Sunday. So I'm going to see what is the latest thing I can do to the end of the semester. So if the end of the semester is 13th, I believe, right? Yes. So I'm going to push it back to 12th to make it the last day that you can submit with maximum losing mark is going to be right then. So I'm going to push the due date as far as I can so you can do this study in, in uh, uh, the next session that we have is a Monday, right? So you can do your studying for the test. And believe me, do not study the night before of the test. The only thing that it does is it's going to confuse you. You come over here and you're going to uh, ruin. It's going to get ruined. Uh, the best thing, the night before, go out partying. I don't know. Don't drink too much so you can wake up in the morning. But seriously, yeah, go enjoy your time the night before the thing. And instead, study now. Like, stay awake now till Monday and ask your questions on Monday, then do light studying before the test, and believe me, you're going to all pass beautifully. Yes, my friend. So I'll go check it out. If it's like, if it's five days sequential going back, I'm going to push that thing the last five days to be the very end of the semester. But that, that brings this. There is no late submission after that. You can like, I'll do that so you can submit it with maximum mark that you can get, but then I have to mark everything on the 13th. Oh, it is 12? Yes. So it is already yeah, done. It is so it is already. So how many down does it go? Uh, Seven steps? Holy mother of. Like nine steps. Uh, okay, nine steps. So like 10% each. So it is done. So I already did that and I didn't remember it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. The quiz, I'll make it online. The quiz, I'll make it online. She forced me. I didn't want to. How many quizzes are we done? You already did nine, right? You already did nine. So I'll, if, I, if I make it more than 10, I'll drop the lowest ones. So 10 is going to be the sweet spot. If, it, if I give you more quizzes than 10, just to prepare you, then I'm going to drop the lowest marks. So everybody's going to be happy. They're not going to be, you know, and at the same time, you, you uh, kind of review everything. All the answers for the quizzes are up. I think I can. I think I can. That means I have to do the quizzes before, before Wednesday. Everything has to be finished before Wednesday. Sure, I'll try to. OK. Yeah, it's, if, if you're not interested with 20%, I can make it. OK, let me pause this.